Some of you may have heard that I made an official announcement that I am going to try to hold, for better or worse, a 24 hour race in BMMP against a whole bunch of other YouTubers. It's going to be, I'm guessing, problematic. But since I was the one that announced this, well, I'm in charge of making the hybrid system for something like an LMDH or an LMH. Some of you may have seen that I have actually already done a hybrid system for an LMH. But I always thought that LMH, ever since they announced LMDH and everyone else was jumping on the bandwagon, that I think that LMH is going to go the way of the dodo very soon. So I have to now make a hybrid system for LMDH. Even a lot of early supercars like the Ferrari, La Ferrari that went hybrid, they drove different wheels. And that's how LMH runs, but not LMDH. No, LMDH runs a hybrid system that goes into the same drive line that the engine is going into to the rear wheels. So maybe just two wheels. I don't know if they're allowed to have front wheel drive, but I'm not sure why you'd want to because it didn't work out well for Nissan. Anyway, getting it to run off of separate wheels like the Ferrari, La Ferrari or LMH might do if they so choose to, this is uh kind of it, it's really easy as you can see here the engine goes into here and then into a drive axle which then goes out to the either wheels and this one is fun attaches the other wheels now you may ask well why can't you just connect it to the same wheels well that's because there's a thing called a um input index and it's a little bit complicated i don't fully understand it myself like this stuff all makes sense like i get this but this i don't understand what's more particularly annoying about it is this line right here oh, it's so frustrating so you can't have twin engines going into the same drive line and you can't have an electric motor or a petrol engine going into the same drive line or Maybe you can. Let's say for instance, I had an axle going out here. Now I couldn't attach that to the electric motor, but I could attach it to a fake wheel and then have the electric motor attached to a fake wheel and then create beams in between said fake wheels. If we have a look at this thing, which it's a goddamn mess, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Right here, we have some fake wheels called BRK numbers. And as we see, it comes out here, goes to a differential, and then it has these fake wheels, which do nothing other than to be able to apply brakes to either side. So you can see them moving around there. These are not wheels. The wheels, the real wheels are right here, and these spin around with it. And those are where the brakes get applied to. But since these are nodes, I can attach nodes. And that allows me to have more wheels in the system. Some of you are now thinking, well, you just did a twin engine one. Why didn't you do that to join the two vehicles together? Ah, well, <laughs> you can't control two transmissions. <laughs> and a transmission can only take a clutch and a clutch can only take an engine. So I couldn't have had it interject before it got to the transmission or the clutch. And I couldn't have it afterwards because then I'd have an engine going directly to wheels. So then when it revved too much, the engine would blow up. Ha! Huh. Yeah. So that's why that one didn't work. But we're going to try it today with an electric motor and a petrol motor. Now, the reason why this is going to work is because an electric motor doesn't need a transmission. Oh, fancy pantsy, huh? So we have one engine. It's going to have a differential stuck in the middle. It's going to attach to a fake wheel. On that fake wheel, we're going to have an our electric motor that doesn't have a transmission. And then it's going to copacetically drive the rear wheels. I've never done this before. Let's give it a try. This is probably going to kill me. So for me to actually do this, I need to be able to package it in something. And I'm thinking something like a hypercar. Oiled. Baguette. This thing is going to be absolutely balls to the wall because this is just the cream of the crop. Being this new sort of Koenigsegg Ford GT sort of thing, I think I'm going to go with a smaller engine, pump up a lot of power from it, then get the electric motor on top of that. I could go in inline three, but to be honest, for handling reasons, the box of four is a lot better because it is really, really low. And if Porsche is starting to use it, apparently then it's good enough for me. What the heck that is a... <laughs> All right, I've seen many of strange manifolds, but that one takes the cake. I can't actually even understand how 
What is happening here? Anywho, I think about 400 kilowatts works for this sort of thing. If you're in backwards land, that's about 500, nearly 550 horsepower. Let's give her a listen. It's gonna sound like fart cans. I don't know about America. I don't know why they seem to love the Subaru engine so much, but here in Australia, it's very ubiquitous. It's kind of like the equivalent of your Hondas with the big exhausts. They just, they're not very pleasant here because they're just so everywhere. Well, doesn't sound so bad. And I can't hear everything over the incredibly loud turbo intake. Listen to this. So like, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then that crack when it comes off is insane. Well, I, I think that's good. We got a 1.9 liter, yeah. Let's start making choices. We're gonna go rear wheel drive only. It's gonna have, let's go a little bit more high tech, like a dual clutch. Got some big slicks on this boy. Not maximum size. This is still a road car. And we're not gonna increase the quality because higher quality sliders here look good, but in BMG, they suck. Got some good old high quality brakes as you would want from a vehicle of this probable price. And you, you know, just balls to the wall everything. So far these numbers look okay, but we can add downforce next. Though I do really quickly want to hide this chassis. Oh, nope, nope. Uh, uh, hide the chassis, not the engine, please. There we go. What body morphs do we have? Uh, oh, okay. That's a weird one. Got, oh, okay. You can go kind of like a Batmobile sort of thing. And oh my, you know what? Actually, hold on. This looks interesting. I think I could work with this. Something like this, I think will work nicely. Okay, that spaghetti exhaust is causing a bit of an issue. Let's stick some mufflers on there quickly. I'm sorry, I meant exhaust tips. You get the idea. Yeah. Those, the, the exhaust is not happy. Let's move this engine position just a lot more forwards. It's a little too far back. But from here, at least it's not popping through the diffuser. So that's all good. Then on the front, we're gonna have something to go here. I'm thinking that these look the part. And in the aerodynamic section, it looks like, yeah, we're getting a lot more on the front than what we want. Having real wings on cars is not very popular. So what we might do instead is grab something that looks like an active wing sort of dealio. This is properly aligned, but it looks like it's still leaning backwards. That's weird. Let's move you forwards, rotate you, and then re-put you in. Nope, okay, it just wants to lean back. It's great. And now our rear wing Doing enough, good. So that's a lot of downforce on the rear. We could reduce a bit of that for a little bit better efficiency. And somewhere around here, these numbers look good enough. Next, I suppose, is to make it look good. I think this is probably a good enough look. It's doing the job. It's not the best looking car I've ever made, but for something where the purpose of it is not to have it really be about its looks, but more about the technicalities behind it, I think that this is good enough. The name on the other hand, I think we're gonna go with Ace since they're always my experimental brand. And then since the back looks like an X, something like, Exotron, maybe, I don't know. How much does this go around the track? I'm gonna guess somewhere about two minutes. Hopefully just a smidgen bit more. Oh, apparently a lot more. Well, we're gonna make it go even faster once we export it over to BeamNG. So unbreakable features, then we're gonna unpack the mod. Now this thing will come with electric motors of its own by default from automation. I'm going to utilize those motors for this. Before we go fettling though, I should probably make sure that the vehicle is even really usable. Otherwise it'd be a huge waste of time. Little bit of brake and understeer, but that's the sort of stuff that we can tune out in BMG. Oh, a little bit of oversteer. I have no stability control in here because, <laughs> come on. Stability control? Really? Come on. Anyway, this is actually seeming pretty good. Little bit slower than what you'd want from a hypercar. But it is putting out Harper Guard times. And here in BeamNG, it sounds exactly like every one of a million Subarus with fart cans on the back, which is very unfortunate. Still, a really cool looking vehicle. Most of that is the body, and I will give credit to, to the mod maker. Yeah, I, I, I like this. Next, let's see this. We do have 
Electric motor available. Mm. Normally what I would do is I'd have the normal motor run to the rear wheels and then the electric motor go through a front diff and then connect to the rear wheels. That's what we're doing this time. This time we're going into the electric one and we're going to start with the electric motor, which is not here. My bad, it's in this folder, the one that's just got like a code name. And then the electric motor can be found in here. The question is, is how do I have this make its own slot? I could add just a new slot, I reckon, here. I could put it in brake line lock since that that's never really used. You know, just cheating to figure out ways to make this work. Let's open up the main. Some people put their mods in the horn section. This isn't actually going to make it a horn. It's just whatever you select in here is whatever it becomes. It doesn't particularly matter. So I'm gonna go in, I'm not gonna do the line lock, but I am going to duplicate the line lock and then call this EV underscore motor. Then under here, I'm gonna put that in there. Wait, this isn't the electric motor. This is the electric motor controller. Where is this electric motor controller? Here it is. All right, am I gonna need this? I very much might, but I suppose I could leave this. Oh no, no, all this is just a basically a slot creator. So then we can have more slots coming out of here. But now we've given this what it needs to be. What we're gonna look at next is actually the vehicle controller. This is where things are gonna get a little bit complicated and we'll have to fiddle with this as it comes along because this is a the controller for the vehicle, but the petrol has its own one. We go into engine. We can see that it's got one here with shifters in it. So it's a little bit tricky but now we can collapse that and nope okay we can't what i'm looking for is an output and it looks like it just goes straight to rear drive shaft this one has just a powertrain into there i just want to just follow this little bit of a thread the main engine now goes into gearbox then the gearbox here goes into transfer case oh god ah the transfer case then goes into the drive shaft a bit convoluted to get there but we made it finally so they both end up in a rear drive shaft and then from the differential it takes the rear drive shaft in yeah here we go rear drive shaft so either one of them will come into here and this is where i have to start doing a lot of lateral thinking what we're gonna have to do is oh no this doesn't work either uh, I need to I need to write this down on a piece of paper. I need to visualize this. We have the main motor coming into the clutch, into the transmission, then into the transfer case, uh, TC, then into the drive shaft, and into the rear differential. Then what we have over here is an electric motor, and I think we want to replace the drive shaft with potentially a differential of its own, then put this into a fake wheel, and then this is an output shaft also to a fake wheel. Make sense? Right? Maybe? Can I theoretically get rid of the rear drive shaft? Yeah, good, I can select my own rear drive shaft if I want. As long as the output is a rear drive shaft, we should be good. So you're coming with me. And we're gonna plop you right there. Intercepted drive shaft. Duplicate you and then we're just gonna hide you for now. The transfer case is going to go into a differential. And this is gonna be called splitter. We're also gonna take the electric motor. Hold on, let's grab rear motor. Oh wait, no, hold on. No, that's not right. We're gonna change rear drive shaft now to being EV output. That's gonna go into here. Wait, this, yeah, this isn't important. Hold on. Let's look at the ATV and see how they do it. It makes the nodes and puts all the beams in the nodes, which we'll figure out later. And then it calls it a rotator. We're gonna get rid of brakes. The power, tra okay, here we go. This is what we'll probably want. Let's grab you. I should probably be making a new file with this, but whatever. Get rid of the brake stuff. We don't need that. We don't have a left and a right, so we can get rid of one of those. We don't have a connected wheel. Don't have the brake, don't have friction, don't have none of that. And this is gonna be called EV side. And this will take in the electric motor. Rear motor? Oh, this one's called main engine on the petrol one. So I'm gonna put on the powertrain for this one, rear motor. 
So I hope this is making a little bit more sense to me. We have the rear motor going to the EV side part. Now all we need to do is connect the two wheels together. And then this drive shaft thing we're doing, uh, I think we could skip that for now. Though it does still need to be a differential. And it goes to a splitter. Okay, no, hold on, this works. This line I think we can get rid of. Splitter is going to be the other one. Take that as an input. And then this is going to be ice side. Uh, okay, this is also going to be called uh, something else. Save this with a new slot calling on the new part. We should probably also do this. Cam so drive shaft interceptor. Back in beam and G. We're going to refresh and see how this goes. First, let's try to just add the electric motor. And I forgot to call it not brain uh, break like a uh, lot. Apparently I've got a brain lock. So that's going to be EV motor. And here we go. Let's see if we can do this. So engine when the transmission, we're going to try out this special interceptor drive shaft. Oh, things are looking messy. But now under the electric motor, wheel interceptors. Okay, well, that's it then. Uh, we don't want that. No, oh, okay. We don't want these slots in, especially not that core bit. So that can go away. Refresh. And what do we got? No, okay. Well, it's not working. Currently, the electric motor is attached to the EV output, but not connected to this. This is the internal combustion side. This is meant to connect to this. Or at least the fake wheels. Hold on. Yeah, why is there no fake wheels here? And what's this? EV side not driven? That should be something else. EV side. I suppose that is technically a shaft. Why is it not creating the wheels that we want? Can't add child EV side to parent output on port two. Parent does not have a matching output port. One? Uh, well, that didn't really change anything. So we do now have more shafts. Uh, it's saying that we have a vehicle controller issue, which we can deal with later. Executing expression failed mission string for uh, regen talk modifier performed a rhythmic loop. Okay, well, I don't think I need to know about that yet. Adding a dummy shaft on device splitter on output one. It does indeed add a dummy output shaft. Uh, okay, yep, no, here we go. So now we want the rear drive shaft, but that rear drive shaft is gonna come from the splitter instead. Okay, now a quick refresh. Oh my God, we're getting so close. For some reason, we're just not creating the fake wheels and I don't know why. The wheels are actually here, but like nothing's driving them. Nothing's driving anything apparently and my drive uh, gearbox doesn't work. And they do rotate and everything. Interesting. Why must you be like this? Oh, and they just, you can see them rotating now. I might want to move them back as well. They are very far forward. We'll deal with that later though. What we want is for these to have the wheels on them. Oh wait, no. Okay, I've got it working. I just forgot to comment this line, my bad. And now we'll drive just on the petrol. I took off the turbo. Uh, to get the things to move around and now it's apparently really slow and it idles at four three thousand two thousand Okay, what near, okay. Why is the RPM doing that? I don't understand And let's move that turbo back on all right I can see ever so slightly an air gap between the two so that's all good now just why are there no fake wheels this was okay Yeah, all right, we can get rid of that part save it and come back to here and see if that fixes the issue Ah, uh, things are messed up again on the power graph. I suppose I could compare this to a spinner to see where I'm going wrong. For those of you wondering, this is the spinner. Very, very simple. The collision mesh, maybe not. And of course, because this thing is called a spinner, it's under L for large spinner. I'm getting tidy of your shit, devs. Uh, no rotators in here, unfortunately. Would it be large spinner quad? Perfect. Uh, we got controller, which is fine. I think we need to put that in. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe we do. Let's put in a blank controller. Previously, as it was for steering. So instead, we're going to put that in now. But this is going to be a blank line. So, nope. Okay, it's now just made this a mess again. Powertrain seems very straightforward. The motor itself is very basic. Rotators, okay, so, hmm. All we need is radius, brake torque and spring and parking torque. I don't actually think we need brakes, but we'll give it a try. 
So copy that and post that back in. And Bimchi says no. Non-matching gear ratios for differential outputs. This aim, uh, hmm. Litter apparently needs to have some differential code. Here's a differential, so we're just gonna grab basically this. Differential locked, you know what, that can be open. Actually, you know what, hold on, maybe that should be locked. Just in case the motor runs out of power. Your Y name is going to be Splitter. And drivetrain inertia, okay, that seems all good. Not fix the issues. There's nothing here about differential ratios. Oh, I need to create a differential ratio, don't I? And then we're gonna put in this information into here. That also wants to be 2.94, so I think that's good. Oh, actually, hold on. I can change that to one, can't I? I think that'll work. Refreshing it here. Do we still have those errors at the bottom? We don't. Perfect. Our electric motor is completely gone. Yay! It's not even a slot. So it says unable to decode JSON extra trying uh, electric motor JB JSON decoder error 55 invalid input line 79 gear ratio what is it doesn't not like the comma on the end i mean i did put the comma on myself so get rid of that that didn't seem to fix the issue maybe i've just done this wrong i don't know how i've done it wrong but apparently i have so let's undo that let's grab this entire thing and stick you there then we're gonna call this splitter ratio we also now have to create a slot in here and this is going to be the splitter ratio. Now let's see what happens. And, okay, we're back to this. But I wonder if that's because it doesn't have the new thing in yet. So EV motor intercept. Oh, what? Is it under the engine? Oh, yeah, because it's a drive shaft thing, isn't it? Rear drive shaft, splitter ratio, splitter ratio. Hey, look at that. Okay, that is now in. But it's still showing up the differential thing. I mean, that's set right, but let's switch it to one and refresh and see what happens. Does it still throw up this error? Yes, it does. I don't understand. Many unbearable hours later. Oh my God, I've done it. Kind of. So if we have a look here, we can see that we now have our ice side shaft thing and then our EV side shaft. Perfect. And if we drive, we have to control the gearbox manually. Only the petrol side works. Why? So I've moved the brakes here to around the transmission. And if we drive, you can see that that side works perfectly. Now all we need to do is connect the left side to the right side. I'm making a hybrid, they said. It'll be fun, they said. So we've got some beams here. Ugh. The ones that are moving are the ones with numbers, right? Yes, good, okay. So we'll grab something like this. Put it down here, and this is going to be having its own little name here. Connection between the two. Now, this is no code or anything. This is just that I have a note for it. And this is now going to be like L4. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate all of these. Woo! Yay! Why do I even have a life? It's always just coding. Always with the coding. What have I chosen with my life? One, two, three, four. Good, that's all there is. Now, since straight lines are not going to be particularly great, we do have to make them maybe crisscross a little bit. So let's go again. And then let's do that the other way around now. Yay! Come into here. And now when we drive, we'll see that it is moving the electric motor side. Yay, but nothing is actually happening to the electric motor side. So, yeah, apparently we're driving on grass now. All right, no longer need these nodes up. Now what we need to do is find out where the controller is not controlling the electric motor. Why is electric motor not working? And now why does this happen? When it starts getting up to speed, it'll just go and vomit. I don't get it, why? Why must you be like this? I thought we were friends. I mean, oh, it actually does okay, but then it acts weird. So like it does okay, then it bugs out, but then if we slow down again, it drives normal again, except it pulls to the left a little bit, which is weird. I don't know why. Let's do a little bit of figuring out. Broken only? Nothing seems to break, okay, except for one beam. Where is said beam? It's... I don't... Oh, way up there? I don't care about that. Stress? 
Let's have a look at stress. And then, oh, ju just everything. Everything breaks. Oh dear. Oh, it's just becoming imbalanced, maybe? Oh, that's interesting. Like some sort of resonant frequency thing. Oh, okay. Let's attach these maybe to something else like suspension as well to make it a little bit more solid. So RX1, RX3, 4... Okay, so 1, 2, 3, and 4 are... Some connections here, we'll just grab these. And now see everything crack the poops. Why? Do, do you really hate me that much? No. It can't be so simple. We go into here, fuel tank, it can't be that, it, that can't be the dumb that I did. So apparently the murder's just not getting power? So let's copy this name. Actually, you know what, hold on. We should probably change this to cam so battery so it doesn't conflict. There. Then under the electric motor, let's put in a, one of these and put that in there. Speed limit, core slot, we don't need it to be a... Uh, you know what? Yeah, no, I can say a score. Uh, uh, speed limiter is going to be now battery pack. Save this into here. Do we now have a battery pack? We'll just go in. We'll double check that we have a battery pack. Okay, it's not in. Good. Select the battery pack. And down we drive off. Oh, the electric motor is powering it. Oh my God, it's working. Ah! Okay, well, you, if you're wondering why my uh, vehicle is... Uh, invisible at the moment. That's because I was trying to fix that um, vibration thing that was happening in the little motors. You can even see it spinning around here, but I've done it. And now, oh, okay. Well, that that's not how that was meant to go. But if we have a look here, this is not connected to this. This is a really close, which I don't know why the BMG devs do it this way, but whatever. But it goes from here into here into here. And then this shows that there's power being put from this way into here which is working out fine because the electric, uh, the, the petrol motor goes from here to here. And now we have what we need. Yes. Ah, okay. Well, I bent the wheels. I can't believe I've done it. Now, this is something I heard about from a while ago. A, uh, a person that used to be a part of my community, very smart person. Um, uh, uh, Groundhog, that's right. So Groundhog was the one that I believe, I, I'm pretty sure it was them that told me about this. Uh, okay, okay, well, the only problem is, is I do suck at driving still, that, that hasn't improved, but at least now we've got a proper hybrid system, and now we can fiddle with the motor to make as much or as little power as we want. This is something for the longest time I thought was impossible until I heard this news, and then I was like, you know what, that sounds like too much effort, and I never wanted to do it, but now that I've got it working, hell yeah, I'm gonna do this more. I might even make God for <laughs> A Prius one day. Oh, I can just see nobody clicking on that one. And since Venzel was the one that kind of gave me the motivation to finally do this, and add on top of that to this whole new uh, endurance race that I'm setting up, which go check out when that comes out, which will be April. I'll put the dates on screen in both times. Yeah, they, they finally gave me the kick in the pants to get this working. Doesn't look like I can tell them the good news, unfortunately. What I could do now is I could finally put that talk to you. So this is only meant to have, I think, a 50 kilowatt motor. Can we actually see, hold on, is there a way to see both power things? So if we go to talk graphs, uh, turbo and NA, no, okay, there is a different one. And that, uh, no, no, that's also mm, turbo and NA. There's no electric motor here, unfortunately. That is super sucky. What we can do is get rid of this motor will then show us just the electric uh, okay no it won't why of course why would it show us the electric motor that that would be too easy that's a lot of errors i can't be bothered with oh i've had the audio down this entire time great let's hear that engine in its full glory yay so i'm gonna do a before and after i'm gonna see what this thing does with and without the electric motor and it's slow off the line, but I suppose, you know what? That's a good thing to check because that is actually quite pertinent to what we're trying to do here. Oh, a little bit oversteery. I'm pretty sure I have ABS. Good, yes, ABS is on. And I am probably gonna be better the second time around due to it being uh, like a vehicle that I'll be familiar with on the second time around. More, okay. 
not the greatest driver. I wish I was better at driving. I, I'm not going to lie. I am pretty abysmal. But I do love driving, which is why I do so much of it. And I do believe in the uh, improvement through motor sports sort of thing, which real companies use as an excuse to get into motor racing. I personally believe it for uh, practicing driving as well. Now, my normal braking point is about 200, which is the second sign here. But I have... I mean, a fair chunk of speed here. We're going over 200 miles per hour, somewhere around 230 miles per hour. I think this is probably equivalent to maybe 240. But I have considerably less downforce than what I'm used to putting around here because usually I put around Le Mans type cars. So let's see what we do. Coming to here and break of the 200. Oh, ABS is not happy. Oh, that was, okay, that was terrible. We do have another braking zone coming up. Uh, we're gonna have to try to replicate this as well last uh, next time around. We should also check our speed. I forgot to check my speed that time around. So coming down the next part of the Mossan Strait, the second third, if you will, uh, we reached two hundred and the uh, three hundred and forty-six last time. So what we reached by this point, which should be an even-ish amount of distance. And here comes. Okay, we're gonna should probably should have braked a bit out of the three hundred fifty. There is massive brake imbalance. We're gonna do the same broken braking on the next time around as well. Ugh. A little bit skittish. Drivability is also important uh, in regards to how the vehicle will uh, pull up. I suppose we're probably gonna have an even worse braking experience with the new setup as well. Hold on, I'm trying to concentrate. Uh, because the other one should have braking torque applied as well. Which, I mean, I could reduce. Yeah, you know what, I probably will reduce that. Since it's not actually doing any regeneration because that will mess up the vehicle controller. Alright, I think my vehicle's pulling a little bit to the left at the moment, but it should be fine. Coming into here is going to be a little bit concentrated as well. So... And then brake hard, get it turned at the right angle. Oh, very smooth. Then another right angle section. Stuff that braking distance up considerably. And now bringing it down here, we're also going to be testing out if the uh, vibrations are going to be too much on the vehicle. This has a similar amount of power as to what we're going to see from the actual Lamar cars. And probably less power from the... LMDH instead of LMH. Okay, that was not great turning. Oh, I suppose I should just do a 0 to 100 to see what the real difference is. But this is more fun. And it also gives me more practice on the track because I need to be racing on this for, I mean, not actually 24 hours, but oh, goodness. A bunch of hours. We are going to break it up amongst a couple of drivers, which I will be selecting. I'm pretty sure I know who I want to pick anyway. There are some people in my community that are exceptionally good and fast drivers. I will be dragging them down, however. Okay, breaking here. Okay. And turn in. Turn that way, good. And now power down to the line. This is not a good time. Four minutes, that's pretty abysmal. Okay, a 4.13. Let's see if this is gonna be faster. And away we go. Feels a little bit peppier off the line, but kind of more of the same. I actually, you know what, oh, okay. The vibration isn't completely gone. Oh, and it, I think it's hurting our top speed as well because it's like, taking power to cause that vibration. You can't create energy like vibration from nothing. It is being taken from the motor. Oh, okay. Apparently there's more work to be done. I suppose it's safe to say that this is the singular most tedious thing I have ever tried to do. So there's lots of other things that I've tried to do that take a really long time, but this one is I know what to do. It just won't do what I want it to do.
So, what we've got is we have all of the power run out, and we can actually go all the way up to top speed now, which is something that I wasn't able to do earlier. It just... It wants to oscillate and shake so much. And you may be looking at this, Wow, Phil, you fixed it. Well, no. N not 100%. Just close. If we slow this down, oh, I have to slow it down even more than that. You can see that this is oscillating quite a lot. And you may be thinking, well, I suppose it doesn't look that bad. But this is affecting handling. And I suppose we're going to have to find out. Even from the cockpit view, you can see that this thing is oscillating quite a large amount. So will it affect handling? I suppose we'll find out. Only at top speed do you see a little bit of jittering. This may not be the way we go in the future. I suppose the only thing to do is to find out whether this oscillation is too hard to use. Now, the time to beat is a 4.13, and I am completely rusty on this track again, so I think it's going to be a fair assessment. Okay, well. I think it's going to be a fairly apples to apples comparison of the handling. It is a little bit more understeery than what I remember, but then. Oh, you know what? No, this isn't an aero beast, so it shouldn't be actually generating a lot of downfall. So I have to keep that in mind. Oh, okay, getting a little bit of torque steer. Oh, a lot of torque steer. It's tricky to control. Oh, yeah, we also have to stuff up the uh, chicanes on the... Oh, the Morsan straight as well, don't we? Oh, okay. Just completely stuff up that corner entry. Uh, okay. Hmm. It is prone to glitching out a little. I wonder if that's just what happened. If I can't figure this out, I think we're going to have to switch to a uh, LMH instead of LMDH. Now, we are going to break it the 200 meter board. I think we're going a lot faster, though, than last time. Oh, okay. No, we're able to break a lot quicker. What? How was that po- I don't understand how that was possible. But we did. Understeer, under acceleration, but then it also wants to power oversteer. Is this thing you could do with a little bit of suspension tuning, gonna be honest. Our time is looking, you know what, I, I can't tell. We're in the middle of the Mossand Strait. I'm nowhere near the end. Uh, we're gonna break once again at the 200 meter board, about there. There we go, that's what we're expecting. And then... Okay, we've overshot a little bit, but we're going faster this time. How did we break fast in the first one, but then in the second one... It was worse. I mean, we're about the same sort of speed. We were capping out at about 380-something kilometers an hour, which is really goddamn fast, by the way. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well... Oh shit. It's fine. Whatever. We've finished a lap now. 
And, okay, you know what, actually, we are considerably faster. Was it a 413? A 403. Great. All right, you know what? We're going to try this out now with the previous version. From a standstill, it just feels a little bit smoother, I think. It could just be now that I'm just not under stress anymore. And then coming into corners feels nice and smooth. Less oversteer. Our oversteer is tamed a lot more. All right, so I think we're gonna go with LMH, not LMDH. That way I can drive the front wheels. And also allows me to have a more powerful electric motor. So I think that's fine. I also have the setups for that, where it uh, automatically only kicks in at the right speeds because there is speed limitations. I think it's only allowed to start working after 120 kilometers an hour. And then, I didn't know. There, there, was a, there was a lot that went into that particular vehicle. And I think we're gonna go with that instead because this has just been pretty unstable. This is a lot slower though now. It wasn't a particularly powerful motor either. A zero to a hundred could be counted with an egg timer. Like, it was not great. Eh. So, hmm. Maybe there'll be two categories. There'll be the uh, YouTuber category, which will be LMH. And then everyone else will be the secondary category, which will be LMDH. And they can deal with the shaky engine stuff. Or they can just go naturally aspirated and... Uh, have a more staple car, I suppose, but then they won't ever win. Oh, brakes are not too bad in this version. I mean, we are going slower. Oh, yeah, okay. We still do have a little bit of power oversteer going out of corners. So, it's not like it's perfect without it. I suppose I would say it's maybe about 10% worse? All right, breaking now. Oh, oh. oh, that wasn't great. There's a quick refresh there. And, uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the first time I went into the chicane on the Marsan Strait was just me misreading the signs. Because every other time, it was absolutely fine. So, it's got a very long braking distance when going from top speed, which is really freaking fast, by the way. I think, uh, it's 320 kilometers an hour is 200 miles per hour, but this is going 380. And that's 60 more kilometers an hour, which is about... probably... 250 miles per hour, I would say. Just roughly around that sort of ballpark, I think is a safe way to say. Which means that this thing... It's about as fast as a Bugatti Veyron. Not a Chiron. The Chiron's a little bit faster. And not the, uh, the land speed record Veyron either. What did that go, like, 380-something miles per- Oh, uh, sorry, 280 miles per hour, something like that? Like, something ridiculous. And then the Chiron speed tail, or was it the- I don't know. One of the Bugattis went, uh, over 400 miles per hour. This one's not quite that fast, but then again, I am limited on power. There is something about automation cars that just maybe make them go a little too fast in a straight line. I mean, this vehicle isn't light either. I did give it a, a lot of luxury. But then again, I did high quality everything, so maybe that lightened it up as well. This just feels more predictable. I'm not gonna lie. I'd have to do a lot more testing to actually determine yeah, it just feels a little less... Okay, and now we've done a really fantastic time. A 4.05. We're only two seconds slower. For me to give an accurate representation, apparently, I would need to do a lot of experimentation. <sighs> but for now, I'd like to thank my channel members. And that specifically includes the man himself, DeHellerman, for being a top-tier channel member. For the rest of you, thanks for joining. But for now, I'll catch you all... Oh, I don't know. My brain is fried. I think I just said that twice in a row. Catch you all next time. Goodbye.